The agenda for this morning is um, below, and what it is, this is the first thing I want to do is um, just go over what is a rolling forecast, and then the advantages of rolling forecasts, and then we'll do some demonstrations of how to work with them, and then designing and implementing the process, and then some questions. And during the course of the presentation this morning, I'll also just give you a little background on forecasters so you can see how the difference between doing regular budgets or forecasts and using the rolling forecast functionality differs. Okay, so there's, um, what is a rolling forecast? There's a number of different books on this subject. This one is by John Stretch, but it's basically budgeting for the year ahead was during a time of stable markets and stable costs and predictable inflation. So what we're seeing now is that a lot of our clients are getting out of that mode of a once a year annual budget because things change constantly and that budget, which might have looked realistic 12 months ago or six months ago or three months ago, just becomes when conditions change, it becomes irrelevant or not achievable or something changes. So it's a lot, um, it's a lot better to go ahead and measure your performance against a rolling forecast than going against something that had drivers that are now out of date. Okay, so some of the um, features of a rolling forecast are it's flexible. So that um, you can keep going ahead and reforecasting each month. You can still keep your budget in place and lock it down, but what this allows you to do is to now go ahead and using current market conditions and any of the drivers that you know to keep going ahead and reforecasting what you think is achievable based on current market conditions. Price of oil goes up or down, interest rates change, a number of things that are outside of your control can go ahead and affect the performance of the organization. So. It's definitely better to use the current knowns and constraints to use that and use drivers to actually go ahead and reforecast out so that you can get an idea of what the future looks like given all the information that you currently know. And in Forecaster, you can always do a bottom-up budgeting. And what a bottom-up budgeting is, is rather than going ahead and saying to a department, you've got $100,000 for a year, they, we go ahead and we build it up. We have two two trips that we need to make, we need to get this equipment, these supplies, and we take all the individual things we need and that becomes the budget for the year once it's approved. Okay, and there are some advantages of a rolling forecast. One of them is, is that priorities change during the course of the year. What looked important in January um, when you're sitting in June and sales are down, you might have to put some more money in marketing or you might have had an incredible first quarter and now you want to go ahead and say, our sales are going to double this year, so let's go ahead and recast the cost because we know it's going to take a little bit more money to get those sales, but the market changes and you just want to go ahead and have those continuous conversations versus an annual event. So inside Forecaster you can support multiple budgets or forecasts and you can also track the actuals. So it's putting it all together to really get a better snapshot of what the future looks like. And when we do the rolling forecast, because you don't want to take the work of doing a budget over and over again, you can make it driver based and you can make it a short cycles for making changes. And this can just be a continuous effort. So if you make your templates or your input sets in a sort of a clever manner using some drivers, then reforecasting becomes quite simple. Okay, so let me give you a, a quick demonstration. The first one we'll do is we'll take you through Forecaster and um, just to give you to lay the groundwork about how it actually works and then the second demonstration I'll give you how we use rolling forecasts. So if, you, if we look into Forecaster and we go into our input sets, and I'm going to use the budget for 2006. It's a little outdated, but the concepts are the same. So inside Forecaster, you're able to lay out what you actually need. And one of the advantages of using Forecaster is that you can track things that are not in your general ledger. You can track head counts and all kinds of drivers that you need that you'll use later on for allocations. So you can see here, this is what I'm seeing here is just um, a sheet for one of my departments. In this case, it's the New York Manufacturing. So this would be the equivalent of a worksheet in your Excel workbook. And you can see here that whenever I go down there, this is going to be training and benefits and work 
workers comp, and this is going to be salaries. These are going to be, and it tells you at the bottom, this is coming from the human resources account. So if you want to see the details of what goes behind that, that's in the human resources tab. And now you can go ahead and see all the employees that are going in there. So we're budgeting at the bottom up or we're budgeting at the detail level. And we're going ahead and saying that this employee is going to be 100% dedicated to this department. I give them a pay rate. I can go ahead and say in the fourth month they're going to get percentage changes. And so it'll kick in during that month. And I'm going to give them a bonus. And I can give them the state that they're in so that I know how to do um, some of the payroll taxes. So just basically based off of the individual pay rates, we're able to go ahead and let's just go into here and just show you quickly. All of the benefits are put in there as well. So it's calculating FICA and Medicare and life insurance and workers' comp. And I'm overriding with salary grades. You can see here that only some people are getting this group medical and some people are getting that. And that's basically I'm going to assign the employee the pay types. And those pay types are going to drive the benefits. And so when you're inside Forecaster, as you're changing the salary, on the sheet over here, all of your payroll taxes and all of your payroll taxes and your benefits are changing as well. So this, se this section here does not have to be filled in. It's filled in just by going ahead and putting all the salaries in, in place. When it comes for CapEx, I've got capital expenditures. In this case, I don't have any, but I could go ahead and put in all the purchases I need to make for at the capital expenditure level for that department. And I also have the ability to do revenue modeling. So this is how we can start to use some drivers. Let me just switch to a different department that has a little bit more revenue. But um, you can go ahead and put drivers in there to go ahead and say, I'm projecting out this number of units or this number of clients, whatever the multiplications are. And then you're able to use calculations in here to go ahead and do the same thing you do in your Excel spreadsheet. So in this case, I'm doing a traditional style budget where it is, it is January, February, March, and it's actually the budget amounts. And this is just one department here. If I wanted to go ahead and flip, I can go to another department. And let's go to the Eastern Sales Department. And I gave them an override for their sheet, so they only see three accounts. And if I just sort of continue on over here, I could just go into another department by way of example. And let's go into Midwest Customer Services. OK, and their budget looks a little bit different. There it's um, done over here. They can fill in their travel expenses. You know, they can say it's 10000 it's $1,000 a month, and fill that in. They can also go ahead and put details in here. And I can insert a couple of lines. And I'll put two. And here I'm putting in that it's going to be the fall show. Whoops, let's get this right. And that's going to be $500 a month. And then I'm also going to have the winter show. And you could do this if you were doing this for office supplies. You could put in toner and paper, whatever it is that you might need. And there's all kinds of things to do, increases, et cetera. So now there's some details underneath travel. And it tells me that nothing is missing. I'm actually adding it up. So I could either send this out for workflow to be approved, or I could save it. OK. So one of the advantages is of the forecaster the forecaster budget or the forecast is everything comes consolidated for you. So when I go to set, do the setup and I go into my roll-ups, I have a departmental roll-up here. So when I say department 95900, that's the entire corporation. If I expand it all, then you can see that there's lots of divisions that are making up this. So it's going to go to the corporation, then it's going to go east, and then it's going to have some departments underneath there. So I'm laying out my org structure in essence. And I'm budgeting at each of these individual sheet levels. And so when we go ahead and put it all together inside our report, let's go ahead and build a report. And I will go into the budgeted income statement. And I'm going to run that. And I'm going to run it for the top level. So my top level is called 95900, and that's the total corporation. So this is a step above. A lot of people are using Excel for their budgeting needs, and 
what this does is it takes all the individual spreadsheets and it just rules out the errors that could come in linking sheets. No linking is required. Everything gets, con gets consolidated naturally just through the functionality of Forecaster. So for instance, if I wanted to drill down to labor and I take it to the labor and now I can see it's going, according to my roll up, it's going east, midwest, west, south. And I want to take a look at the, the Midwest and then the Chicago operations. And I want to look at the Chicago manufacturing. And I say I want to get to the HR details. And now I get a list of what's making up that dollar amount employee by employee. So you can take it from the top level all the way down to the micro level. And these reports can all be set up and they're in the multiples and they're all done with wizards. Okay, so let's go back to some of the rolling forecast features and then in the next demonstration we'll put it together how we're going to go ahead and use that. Okay. So we want to go ahead and talk about designing and implementing rolling forecasts. So we focus on reusability and we focus on reporting. And now I'll go ahead and show you how we're going ahead and doing that. So let me just take this up and let's go back into the product. Okay, so when, you go, when we go ahead and set up a budget, and it's an input set here, a budget is basically going to be a list of input columns. In this case, you can see it's got all of the budgets and it's got rows and it's got some calculations. So if we think of our spreadsheet, the columns going across, the rows, and these are all the formulas inside here. So whatever you can do in Excel, we can go ahead and do inside Forecaster. And then typically what happens is I give it some overrides. I say, okay, for this department, I only want you to give them this lines. For this department, give them that lines. And that's how come when you go into Forecaster and you open up an individual department, it's varying what it's presenting to that individual department. So in this case, what I can do is um, I can set up more column sets and then I can use the copy plan wizard to be able to do my rolling forecasts. So when I'm doing columns, I set up one for let's open this one up. Okay, so in this case here, what happens inside Forecaster is there's tools or there's a wizard over here and an import and export. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the actuals in from GP. So each month it'll go ahead and take the actuals from GP and then it'll send the finished budget back. So you can, these are all the periods that you have in there. So I have the budget and I can also set up periods for my forecast. And then what I can do is if I set up one a column set that has both the actuals for the year and the forecast for the year, depending on what month I'm in, I can go ahead and hide. So in this case, I'm going to hide January or and I'm going to say, I want you to show me the actuals for these months and forecast for the others. So even though they're all set up in the same column set, I can display which ones I'm using. So I'm going to use actuals where it's appropriate and I'm going to use forecasts where it's appropriate. And so then I can always go ahead and um, let me also just show you because you're going to want to use you're going to want to use drivers. So there's all of these um, input set calculations, and a lot of them are just going ahead and taking you know material costs as a function of these two or labor's this or the gross margin is subtracting. And if I went to add some things, I can also go ahead and let's just put one in there. There's also some other formulas, like I can say global, and I can say take 10% across the board, across all the columns. So there's different calculations I can do. So depending on your requirements, we can get pretty complex here. Okay, so let me go ahead and just show you a couple more things. No, okay. So when it comes time, so now let's go into the setup here. And what I did was I set up another um, budget or my forecast. So we're not using the budget 2006. That's what we did at the beginning of the year or we did at the end of last year. And then, you know, market conditions changed. Gasoline went up, interest rates changed, they went up or down. The market, the stock market's doing great. I want to start to get a little more optimistic in my forecast. So what I do is I set up a forecast here and I'm going to be using different columns. And I'm going to have the actuals and I'm going to have the forecasts. And you can also lock them. 
So once the actuals come in, we can actually lock individual columns. So we have the ability here to lock them. And then what you can do is under the wizards, there's a copy plan wizard. So I can copy all of the things I was doing from the actual 2006 into my forecast for 2006, or I could do it for my budget for 2006, but let's just carry on here. And you can copy everything. So you never have to, once things are set up once, you never have to do it again. You can just copy your HR data in, you can copy in the revenue modeling you've done, and so this will populate it, and now you've got the ability, you've got a completely different forecast that's actually mixing actuals and the forecast, and let's go in there, the forecast 2006, and let's just switch to a department that's got a little more me to it. Okay, so you can see that what we're mixing here is I've got the January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September actuals, and then I'm going to start forecasting in here using my October, November, December to get actually the entire forecast. So, and it'll, we could put math along the way, so you can see it's $900,000 there, and it's, it's going ahead and adding all of this up, and now I can go ahead and tweak in, maybe some people, you know, left the company, I hired some new additions, some of the revenue modeling has changed, um, etc. And now I can get a better picture. And each month I can just unhide and I can just hide and unhide what I need to reflect this. And I can copy it and I can save it. So it's actually pretty flexible. So that's just, you know, to give you a little flavor of what we can actually do inside Forecaster and how we can marry the actuals and the forecasts and keeping the original budget intact. Okay, so just a couple of tips and tricks before we open up for some Q&A. One is plan for your calculations to be reusable. I mean, the margin is always going to be revenue minus the cost of goods sales. So let's go ahead and put all those calculations in there. If you want to say that, you know, office expense is going to be $50 per employee, use the headcounts that are calculated inside Forecaster to drive them. And you want to look for correlations to drivers and build appropriate calculations. So just, you know, if you analyze, if you're currently doing your, your budgeting inside Excel or you're doing Forecaster, any place that we have to put additions in there, we can just use the calculation features in, inside Forecaster just to drive it. So as one number changes, all the rest of them just flush out of there. And when we start to use these calculations as drivers or to um, make other account balances, we can get some dynamic reports. Another thing I would want to offer up is that you're not limited to just your GP chart of accounts. There's a mapping exercise, so if you have to get more granular, put stat things in, or whatever you need to go ahead and put those buckets in place that we can go ahead and use to go ahead and create the budget, that's available as well. In addition, there's a number of different wizards inside. Forecaster, one does allocation, so if you find that you're going ahead and taking the rent inside the admin budget and you want to now allocate it across all the other departments, that functionality is available to you as well. 